呃，下一个 talk 是这威廉·江省，那呃带来的呃题目是 Panoramic Video Environmental Monitoring Software Development and Application。那这他现在是在成大的呃地球科学系，那他参与的计划是有关于就是 Remote Sensing 型的一个的计算。那让我们呃就是掌声欢迎这威廉·江省。Jay Johnson, and I'm a student at Chenggong University. Uh, I'm a student at Chenggong University, a master's student. Um, I'm a research assistant in the uh, remote sensing laboratory there. Uh, why, am I in, why am I in Taiwan? Uh, before coming to Taiwan, I studied Chinese for six years, and uh, I decided to come here and pursue my interest in science, but also improve my speaking ability in Chinese. But I'm afraid my Chinese isn't as fast as my English, so I'll speak in English today. Uh, in the remote sensing lab, uh, I, worked, I started working with uh, satellite data for uh, studying oceanography, um, using data that's collected by satellite through uh, the NOAA program. And, uh, but more recently, I switched to this other project uh, using a panoramic video camera. And so I thought I'd take this opportunity to talk about how, how I've been learning Python to do this program and uh, introduce my program and, and a few of the modules I used. Uh, so I was first introduced to Python a year ago this month. Probably at this time last month, I, I only knew Python was a, another programming language. And I took a tutorial on uh, ArcGIS scripting, and that's when I first found out about Python. And uh, the more I learned about Python, the more I liked it, and uh, continued to use it over this year, learning uh, programming simple CFD models or simulations, and, and using the NumPy and Visual Python modules made this both easy and fun to do. Um, also used it in evolutionary computation uh, and also in image processing, like the project I'll tell you about now. Our lab purchased this uh, spherical camera. It's uh, like what you, what takes pictures like what you may have seen on uh, the Google Street Maps. Uh, it has five cameras around the side and one on the top and you can mount it to the top of a vehicle and drive around and take video or images. Or you can put it on a tripod and carry it to any other destination you like. And you can also connect a GPS device to your, the laptop you're using and it'll record GPS data along with video into the same file. And it takes images like this and, and video. Um, and what you can do, uh, the software that's included with the camera allows you to publish video and uh, still images to a GIS system, um, like a system like this one. This is uh, the Global Earth Observation and Data Analysis Center, also at Chengkong Dashui. Uh, my advisor, uh, Zheng Chen Liu, is also the director of this uh, research center. And their, their goal is to uh, provide a fast response to the disasters that can be uh, analyzed from satellite imagery. So they try to keep this website up to date um, when there's a disaster uh, so that you can do uh, comparisons or anal analyze the situation from overhead. Uh, so here's an example of putting images from the Ladybug camera onto a GIS system. And you've probably seen something similar. And you could click on uh, an image and, and zoom in and pan this around and, and also in this setup you could look at the surrounding uh, satellite image that's been overlaid on the contour. Uh, so what we would like to do with this camera 
in environmental analysis is be able to do time series comparison. And in order to do that, um, so we want to be able to track changes in the environment through this video. So you can take video of a route multiple times and then, and then uh, select particular locations and compare the imagery. Uh, and this way you could analyze landslides if they've grown bigger or, or have revegetation, um, change in the road situation. Uh, and we would like to also eventually be able to grab the uh, three-dimensional three data, like being able to measure the sizes of landslides and uh, roads and other things. Um, here's one example of an application is being able to pull the same viewpoint from multiple videos uh, at a particular location. So the system that we would like to have, what I'm what I'm working on is, is something where you can just click on a geographic location or type in coordinates and then, and then it'll automatically help you from all the videos we've collected pull the related imagery and also be aligned so that you can directly compare over time. Um, but what we need to do is have accurate, accurate GPS data and uh, our devices that we've used, and I think most devices out there, just take uh, data once every second. But the video takes 16 to 20 frames per second, and what it does is it gives the same GPS location to all those frames within the second. Instead of what we would like to have is um, more accurate representation of that image's position. So you can do something simple by doing a spline interpolation and, and, re and adjusting those images away from that single location. And, to, and it looks more accurate, but there's still a lot of error involved. Uh, the GPS device itself has a, is not you know, perfectly accurate. And uh, here's an example of when the vehicle is stopped. And, but the, according to the GPS data, it moved about seven meters in this uh, strange S-curve shape. And so it's these kinds of in inaccuracies that we um, would like to fix. And uh, another issue with the included software with the Ladybug is that it doesn't orient, orientate the images so that north in the image is facing north on a GIS system. And when we published images to the, the Google Earth system, what it would do is automatically put the center of the image facing north and wrap around where the edges are facing south. So one easy way to solve this situation is just to shift the image so that north of the image is facing north. But in order to do that, we need to be able to calculate the correct uh, orientation. And you can calculate orientation from the GPS, the path that it follows. So how do we do this? Uh, one approach is to get an extra device, the IMU, and record that data along with the video. And, uh, but the problem with that is these devices are also costly, and uh, it doesn't help with video that you've already recorded in the past. So what we'd like to do is have a different approach to, that we can also apply to video we already have. And another option is visual odometry, also known as ego motion. This is where you use the, the, uh, the images from the video, sequential images, to calculate uh, the change in position and orientation of the camera. And it's a popular research topic right now in robot localization, especially those with that walk on legs that don't have wheels to turn and, and you can't calculate exactly how far it's gone just from the wheel motion. And yeah. So the setup I've been using <clears throat> is uh, Python XY. Uh, this is a good package. It, it includes everything, I think, everything you need to get started in scientific computing. Uh, it includes NumPy and Visual Python and OpenCV. And a good IDE that I've been using, um, Spider. 
And I think the only module I use in my program that didn't come with this package is uh, PIXEF for adding and editing uh, coordinate data to JPEGs. Um, also included with the Ladybug camera system is the complete API for controlling the camera and also accessing the video stream. And I use that in the program along with uh, SIFT, which is a program for finding matching points within multiple images. If you want to find an object within uh, another image, it'll help you match similar points. And I'll show that in a minute. <coughs> so the Ladybug API is written in C++. Uh, so in order to use this, I need to learn about uh, Python C types module and, uh, and then write a wrapper around this API. And, <clears throat> and then afterwards, I wrote already al also wrote a class to help manage a lot of the information for me and then could use it easily within a Python application. And uh, just talk a little bit about C types, if you're not familiar with it. It allows you to access a dynamic linked library and, and use the methods that's uh, written in C++. And so all you need to do to, to load up a dynamic linked library is uh, use the C types modules method CDLL and just put the name of the DLL and then you can access the, the functions as you can see here. And the, the thing that, I didn't know C++ before this, so everything I know about C++ I learned through having to learn C types. And one, one thing if you're gonna get started on C types and C++ is um, you need to manage the memory a bit and do things the C++ way. And with C types you do this by doing, uh, creating a string buffer and you pass this predefined buffer to the method and it, it writes to that buffer and then you can uh, extract the data from that by using the struct module uh, and the unpack, unpack method in there. And to simplify all this stuff, because it wasn't very Pythonic, uh, I, in my API, uh, API wrapper, uh, you can just directly access uh, or directly input the things that are necessary for the user to input, such as which camera we're dealing with, uh, which camera we want to get information from, and then instead of having to predefine uh, the, the buffers for overriding, it'll simply return the tuple. So by using this uh, wrapper, you don't have to deal with any of the uh, C types and memory man management issues. So I did that for uh, about, I think about half or more of the API, mostly just the methods that relate to accessing uh, recorded video not for directly controlling the camera. And the SIFT program, I'll tell you a little bit about that. Uh, it's called the Scale Invariant Feature Transform and is developed in 1999. And what it does is you give this program one image and it'll find thousands of unique points within that image. And uh, this, is a, this is a executable uh, demo program you could download off the web and and calling it through Python, you use the subprocess method and call it in this manner. And for each one of those points that it finds, it gives a, a 128 value descriptor, a numerical descriptor. And then <clears throat> after you process images and, and get all these key data, the way you find matches is by comparing these uh, numerical descriptors. And you just do a uh, the easiest way is just to do a Euclidean uh, distance measurement between the, the sets. And when, that <clears throat> when the distance is minimized, that's probably a very good match. And then there's also other things you need to do, do to, to, uh, to, to take the bad matches and uh, to, to separate the good matches from the bad matches. <coughs> And here's an example of uh, what this program can do with uh, 
a single camera driving down the road. So you take two, two frames of the video and running the SIFT program, you could find uh, ve these flow vectors. Um, so each one of these yellow lines describes the movement of a point from one, one frame to the next. And this already, this is the first step in doing anything related to uh, 3D, uh, extracting the 3D environment or making depth maps. Uh, so another module I used is OpenCV. Uh, maybe some of you are already familiar with this. When I first got, it, got started with this, uh, it, was, it was difficult getting started because all the examples I, I was finding all had import CV at the top. And the documentation I was finding just said import CV. And then finally I came across an example that said import CV2. And with having, I have the latest version of OpenCV, I, I didn't know that I need to do CV2. So if you're getting started with it and, and you see these examples with just CV, you need to switch it to CV2. But you can still use all the examples that are out there. Um, you just need to import the submodule. They kept the old version of CV as a submodule to the new version. And if you just change the line to importing from CV2, then the rest of the code should work for a lot of those examples you find on the, the web. And I'll tell you about one difference between the CV2 and the, the older CV is that the CV2 is more Pythonified and simplified. Uh, in the, here's an example of how to calculate a homography in the old method and the new method. In the old method, you'd have to do, uh, like in C types, using C types with the C++ code, you would have to create your buffers. You would have to move your NumPy arrays data into those buffers and, and also create a buffer for the output array and then pass all this to the method to get your result. But in the CV2 version, uh, they, they allow you to directly use the NumPy arrays in the, in the method, which, uh, which is very convenient, but not entirely uh, straightforward. Uh, one thing I found is that you can't use views of an array in when you're using it with uh, OpenCV. You have to actually copy uh, a view into a, its own array and then pass that to uh, a function in CV2. So these are a couple of the uh, biggest issues I had when I was first starting out. And if you want to play with OpenCV, <laughs> I hope that helps. Uh, what is a homography? Now, homography is, is the translation of a of points on a plane uh, from one image to another image. And in this case, we're gonna use the road as one plane in one image, and you wanna see how that plane moves to the next image. And we already get a sense of what's going on with the SIFT matching. And then you can use the points from the SIFT matching that are on the road, that are all on the same plane, to calculate a homography. And once you have the homography calculated, you can then calculate any point's movement on that plane, like this. And so you can see how the SIFT ma uh, matches align well with the uh, homography. And then you can also do other things like uh, uh, translating it to a top-down view. And in this way, you can get a sense of how, how, how the vehicle is moving along that road. And both the, the PIL module, the, the Python imaging library and OpenCV both have perspective transform, uh, different, uh, but they do the same thing, um, just set up differently. And I've been using the, the Python imaging library mostly because it also links up with the TK interface well for making GUIs and putting images on the canvas. And here's an example of translating those images to a top-down view and then somewhat stitching them together to make a longer view. And once you know how to manipulate uh, images with, 
with uh, with a pill or a open CV, you can do some fun things like this. <laughs> So once you understand the, the 3D environment setup, if you can extract this data from, from the video, you can uh, do, other, do a lot of things. You could insert other objects into the scene. You can uh, fake a rotation of objects that are in the image. And uh, one last module I'd like to describe. It, it might be useful to some of you that do photography is the PIXF. There's a lot of uh, XF editing um, modules I've seen, but this is the only one that adds GPS data to an image. The other ones seem to just edit uh, GPS data that's already in images, but adding it is a, is a different ball game, and this is the only one that does it as far as I know. And it's pretty easy to use. You can open the file and then use set geo to add the latitude and longitude, but what isn't as obvious is how to put altitude data if you need to put altitude in there. Uh, you can do it in this way, and then you just write the file, and you're done. It's a pretty easy package, and if you like to take photography, uh, this might be useful. And in closing, there's still a lot of work to be done. It's an it's a error-prone system because it depends a lot on image resolution, the stability of the camera, which is bouncing around with the car on the road and also differentiating, differentiating the, the road vectors from other objects. And, uh, and there's, there's software out there that does things like what I'm trying to do. And as I learned Python, the more I learned, I realized, yeah, I could probably try to do it myself instead of paying lots of money or having the lab, lab pay lots of money to, to purchase this software. So I started working on this project at the beginning of this year. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Thank you. <laughs> because we have eight minutes, so we can open uh, more than three questions. Okay, now this this Chinese is actually good, so you need to use Chinese to answer too. Hello, I want to ask you, can you turn to the back of the screen? There's a white dot on that one. In the back, in the back, in the back, in the back. Martin, can you ask me, this one I didn't understand. Is it just that you can identify these two objects as the same object? Uh, the, the descriptor describes uh, the point, and you, you want to match these descriptions. But it, it's, it's not an exact science, but it, it does a good job of matching two points. Okay, 就是说它可以identify这两个是同一个卡,是这样吗? Oh, um, the program itself won't do that. Uh, you need to write that algorithm yourself. Okay. And you'd probably want to use multiple points, and, and you might... You might want to add in uh, looking at the color of the object also. Um, yeah, it wouldn't be as simple as just to, to look at one particular point. The descriptor is just for that one point, and it has to do with uh, the, the gradient change in color uh, in different directions mm -hmm. to match up, to okay. create that description. Okay. Hey, uh, thank you for your very interesting presentation. Uh, I think you work very great, especially for the disaster. I think use the panoramic uh, image to calculate how big of the landslide is a great idea. But the question is. Um, uh, lens size is three dimension, and the image is two dimension. And how do you calculate the effect area of the lens line? Well, right, it would just be a two-dimensional view. Um, 
but even from the two-dimensional view, you can you can tell somewhat how how much it expanded or 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 regrowth if there's been regrowth occurring. Uh, if you want to do a 3D view, you'd probably have to integrate satellite imagery as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you could also make a, if you have the car traveling along, you, 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 can, you have different viewpoints. Mm -hmm. So you can get a, somewhat of a 3D view. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't gone that far yet. But you should be able to eventually make depth maps and, and be able to get a sense. But, but it will still be along the road. Yeah, but if you use the satellite image, you also have the resolution problem. Because now the, the resolution of the satellite image is not uh, uh, Sorry, I, I'm not hearing that clearly. Sorry? I didn't hear you clearly. Could you repeat that? Well, I, I, I say uh, if you use the satellite image, also have a resolution problem. Mm -hmm. Because the, the resolution of the satellite image is not really good, because that might be uh, the better one is uh, uh, 65 uh, centimeters. And it, your panoramic image is quite high resolution. And how do you deal with the, the different solution? <laughs> I haven't really researched this aspect yet. Okay. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Then I think we'll end here. Let's thank Mr. Wei Lin Jiangsen.